Welcome back, and thanks for joining us for week five of our 40-day journey through Romans 8. Last week, our study taught us to suffer well. We know that suffering is going to happen, but learning to put our trust in the one who formed us and who goes before us is assuring as we walk through unexpected times. In Romans 8, verses 26 through 30, the Bible says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows that the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, He called them to come to Him. And having called them, He gave them the right standing with Himself. And having given them the right standing, He gave them His glory. This promise, the promise for all to work together for good, is for each of us adopted children of God. And we can trust God for our good because He's had a plan from beginning time. All of us are broken into pieces, pieces of good things, pieces of sinful things. And God puts each one of us back together like a completed puzzle to look like Jesus Himself. Listen closely now as Pastor Shane helps us unbox the truth in these verses. Romans 8.28, what a powerful verse. It's a verse that probably many of us know. We've heard it over and over. It's been used to encourage us. It's been used to help us through difficult times. It's, it's a verse that uh, if you're like me, I don't remember life without hearing this verse. And it truly is a powerful verse, a great truth. But can I just be real with you? It's a verse that at times has just frustrated me. I, I know what it says and I know the truth that is contained in it, but there, there's been times in my life where I, I've read this verse or I've heard someone speak this verse and all it did was produce this frustration. You know, all of us deal with brokenness. We've talked about that. We all have hardships in our life. We've all suffered. We've all went through difficult times. And maybe it's cancer, maybe it's death, maybe it's a broken relationship. You can fill in the blank. We all have those things. And at least for me, and I think for all of us, in those moments and as we look back, we can say, you know what? I don't understand how that can be good. I don't understand, I don't see how God can take that situation, that brokenness, that heartache, that separated relationship, that cancer, that death, that sickness, whatever it is, I don't see and I don't understand how God can do something good out of that. And even as we remove ourselves from it, weeks, months, years later, there's still probably things that we go back to and say, I still don't see how God has done something good out of that. If you're like me, when those situations have happened, that verse has just been frustrating. You see, the reality is, as humans, we have questions. And honestly, Scripture can't answer all of our questions. It can point us to truth, and it can give us hope, and it can give us something to look forward to, but the reality is in our human thinking, in our human form, we can't comprehend all of the truth that is contained in God. And therefore, there's always gonna be questions that we just can't answer. There's gonna be things that we just have to sit in the mystery of not knowing and try to enjoy it and have hope in that. But I love what Paul does here in the verses that we're focusing on this week. You see, he's not saying in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things are good within themselves. He's not talking about the things. And that's normally what we focus on whenever we go through difficulties and we go through sufferings, we focus on the thing. 
Paul's not focusing on the things themselves. He's not saying these things and these situations are good, but he's saying that God can and God will take these things, all these things. He sees them, he knows them, and he will take them, the shattered pieces of our lives, the broken parts of our lives, the ugliness of our lives, the, the parts of our lives that we want to forget, that we want to move out of our story. God will take all of those things and he will do something great. Listen to Paul's words. I know we heard it earlier, but he says, and we know, we know there, there's a confidence there. there there's, there's an assurance. This is a fact. This isn't a no, like I hope it's going to happen. There is a confidence assurance. He says that we know that for those of us who love God, those of us that are part of his family, all things, not some things, not the things that aren't that bad, not 99% of the things. He said, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Paul is reminding us that he will use everything in our life for our good and for his glory. That is a promise that we have to hold on to. We talked about it a little bit last week, but one day we're gonna experience that future glory in its fullness. That is what Paul is saying, that that glory to come, God is using all these things to get us there. And he's gonna work it out for our good, even the parts that we don't understand. You see, what I've learned and what I think is really important in walking and living in the Spirit is that God doesn't want the best of us. God doesn't want my best. God wants my all. God wants all of us. If you're like me, I want to put my best foot forward. I, be honest with you, I struggle with, with perception. I struggle with how people see me. That's, that's an internal fight. I always want to look and act and be in the right part. I want people to approve of me. I think we all probably struggle with that on some level. And so a lot of times in my relationship with God, I want to give him my best. But the reality is God wants my best. He wants my worst. He wants the mediocre. He wants all of it. You see, I don't have to hold on to the ugly parts of my life. I don't have to hold on to the broken pieces, the shattered relationships, the things that bring hurt and pain. I don't have to hold on to those. I can confidently give them over to our great heavenly father, knowing that he cares for us and that he's going to take each and every part of those things and he is going to make a masterpiece. That's what living in the Spirit is. That no matter what comes our way, we know that we can give it all to God and it's in good hands because he is working out a masterpiece in us. The good that Paul was referring to in Romans 8, 28 is the good that comes by God working in our lives. God's good purpose is to use everything, a promotion at work, a divorce, newborn baby, a sickness or death, even the road to better health. All these things he can use to make us more and more like Jesus. Suffering's hard and having the right perspective of suffering is hard, but it doesn't have to be. We each can learn to plant our feet in the promises of these verses and know that God knows the beginning to the end and everything in between. He knows us, He's called each of us, and He has given us His glory. I read something the other day that was so encouraging. In summary, it said that for the Christian, what happens to us on earth is the closest we will ever get to hell and the closest we will ever get to separation from God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your everlasting promise to rescue me from my surroundings and even rescue me from myself. I look forward to next week as we deepen our understanding of God. I hope you'll join us then.